Hey right, guys. How you doing, Jimmy? Hey, good. Good to see you. Uh, you don't have time for press right now, right? Uh, no, I need to get in. It's just okay. a car. Aaron is here. Yeah? Yes. Cool. Yes. Cool. All right, cool. Well, I got to get in. Hey. How are you, man? Thank you, Appreciate it. Good to see you. So, uh, yeah, Aaron is the interpreter. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, we can take a minute here just to see everybody. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go in tonight with my head held high, uh, morally clean. And with a clear conscience that I have done nothing wrong. So uh, I'll, hopefully tonight the church will answer the questions that they've been ignoring the last three years. And uh, so thank you all. And I'm going to head in. President Hyvins, how are you? Aaron, how are you? Good. Good. This is my interpreter, Aaron. He's going to be helping me tonight. He's not going to come in. There is, this is the document from the handbook instruction specifically stating that you are to accommodate the interpreter. Okay, I told you to write it. We are not going to be able to make you What is your purpose for that? What is your purpose? Yeah, why can I not have an interpreter to accommodate you? No, you don't. From the church. That's correct. Why didn't you tell me that before? Because the impression I got was that there's no interpreter at all. I decided to provide an interpreter for you if you want one. Okay, yeah, that would be great. It's just interesting that I went from no interpreter to an interpreter. Okay. Why, why is that? Would you like him to come in or not? Would I? Do you think? I do. I'm just surprised that that's a sudden change, that's all. Okay. So I need to have you read this and sign it. So you can have So are you kicking him out? He's not invited to the council. That's okay. Correct. Did I get a copy of this? No, every basic signature's on that. See, what do you think? I know, but I'm asking you, do I get a copy of this? I can, I can give you a copy of the information here, but not the signatures. So can you give me a copy? Can you give me a copy right now? I, I'd have to type it up and I'll, I'll get it to you. I'll send you a document. When, when, and when <coughs> will you send me the document? By Wednesday this week.
appreciate you accommodating me with the interpreter. I should yeah. probably change it. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. I'll have you go back outside. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. First or second council? First council. First council. Nice to meet you. Of course, uh, what I said. Right, right there. I need to be uh, a little bit closer to the state president if I can. Just slide forward. Okay. Yeah. I'll just make this my desk for the evening. So. Cool. President Ogden's bringing the interpreter. Right. Before I came here, there was no interpreter. Now there's an interpreter. I brought my interpreter, but he kept him out. Yes, please. Can you slide your chair back? I need to be able to hear you better. You'll have an interpreter right here. I know, but I want to be able to hear as well. Thank you. Interpreter, be closer to your line of sight, or it's okay. I appreciate you. Yeah. Hey. How are you? Good. I remember you. Yes. See ya. How's your family? Good. And yours? Okay. Good deal. Okay. So Let's have a seat. Where would be a good place for me to sit? Is uh, this that's good? Perfect. This work? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Brother, and this is Jeremy Reynolds from the Thirtieth Ward, and we're here to hold the disciplinary council on his behalf. I've asked. Did you give our opening prayer? Our dear Father in heaven, so grateful for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're grateful for the opportunity to participate in the proceedings this day. We ask that thy spirit may be upon us, and that we might know thy will concerning all things, and that this might be a pleasing unto thee. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. We've had an open prayer. Um, Jeremy, we we've, we've, have convened tonight in this formal disciplinary council on your behalf, the result of which includes the possibility of no action, formal probation, disfellowshipment, or excommunication. The reason for this council is that you are reported to be in apostasy and that you have repeatedly acted in clear, open, and deliberate public opposition to the church or its leaders. You have, among other things, published materials and participated in interviews, which have attempted to discredit the church, publicly express your view that the church's scriptures are fraudulent, and express opposition to church leaders, including the prophet Joseph Smith. The definition of apostasy as defined in the handbook is repeatedly act in clear, open, deliberate public opposition to the church or its leaders. Can, Mike, you, can you finish the rest of the apostasy definition? I'm going to speak what I want to speak. Okay, great. Thank you. Jeremy, do you admit or deny your participation in this conduct? I deny it. Okay. I deny it in the context of how you're framing it. Okay. I'll take up to 15 minutes as stated in the letter that I sent you to present the evidence which supports those things expressed previously. After my 15 minutes, you'll be given 45 minutes to make your statement. Perfect. Do you understand that? I do. Okay. As members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and He is the head of the Church. Restored through the prophet Joseph Smith, that He did see God the Father, 
and his son, Jesus Christ, that he brought forth the Book of Mormon by the power of God and has been led by a continuous prophet since then with continued continue revelation. As part of your public deliberate open opposition to the church, you have published an 84-page document on a public internet site expressing opposition to core church doctrine, which you claim has been downloaded and shared over 100,000 times. This document is being translated into multiple languages. You are soliciting donations for its ongoing distribution and development. You have done multiple online recorded interviews broadcasting your views in opposition of church doctrine and its leaders. There is indication from your public website and also in online public forums that you are openly and deliberately in public opposition to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You are doing this by deliberately and openly mocking and ridiculing God as a psychopathic uh, Sorry. Schizophrenic. Schizophrenic, thank you. Page 70 of your online document. Sorry, these things are hard to read. You express ridicule and mock the Latter-day Scriptures, their origin in the Prophet Joseph Smith. Page 81 of your online document. More specifically, here are some of your quotes and teachings. Page 69 of your online document. You state your disbelief and opposition to the Scriptures. Quote, to believe in the scriptures, I have to believe in a God who endorsed murder, genocide, rape, slavery, selling daughters into sex slavery, polygamy, child abuse, stoning disobedient children, pillage, plunder, sexism, racism, human sacrifice, animal sacrifice, killing people who work on the Sabbath, death, penalty for those who mix cotton with polyester, and so on on page 70 of the same document. Quote, As a believing Mormon, I tried to rationalize some of the craziness by saying, Oh, this is the crazy Old Testament. Sorry, I'm going to back up. Oh, this is in the crazy Old Testament when the law of Moses was in force. Christ came and fulfilled the law of Moses. The problem with this is that the crazy God of the Old Testament was Jehovah. Who is Jehovah? the pre-moral Jesus Christ. So, Christ is a crazy God of the Old Testament. The Christ of the Old Testament and the Christ of the New Testament are light years different. Again, I'm asked to believe in not only a part-time racist God and a part-time polygamous God, but a part-time psycho... Sorry. Psychopathic... Schizophrenic. Schizophrenic one as well. Page 82. Quote, there are just too many problems. We're not just talking about one issue here. We're, t we're talking about dozens of serious issues that underline the very foundations of the LDS Church and its truth claims. Page 39. Quote, I'm supposed to, be, supposed to go to the drawing board now and believe in a God who is not only schizophrenic, racist, but who is inconsistent as well. Yesterday's doctrine is today's false doctrine. Yesterday's ten prophets are today's heretics. Page 42. Why would I want my kids... Am I, am I going too fast or too slow? You're, you're okay. Okay, thank we you. We going too fast? Are we, too fast? Are we okay? I didn't know what the document is, so... Okay. On page 42. Why would I want my kids singing Follow the Prophet with such ridiculous 183-year-old track record? What credibility do the brethren have? Why... Would I want them following the prophet when a prophet is just a man of his time, teaching his his theories that will likely be disavowed by future prophets, seers, and revelators? In his moral blueprint, in not much better than their Sunday school teachers. If historically speaking, the doctrine he teaches today will likely be tomorrow's false doctrine. Page 81 through 82. Quote, I'm sorry. But faith is believing and hoping when there is little evidence for your, for or against something. Delusion is believing when there is an abundance of evidence against something. To me, that's absolute insanity to bet my life, my precious time, my money, my heart, and my mind on an organization, on an organization that has so many serious problematic challenges to its foundational truth claims. In an online video on Mormon stories, you stated on June 13, 2014, Part 1. You state, To me, the book of Abraham has got some problems. 
to me, I look at each individual issue and then I take a step back and say, look, I just don't look at a tree here and there. I look at the trees individually and then take a step back. And I look at the forest and I say, really? Is this a really the one and only true forest on the face of the earth? It doesn't look like it's God's work. It just looks like one clumsy hoax. Part two, you state, I no longer believe in the church. I mean, I'm not a Christian. I really don't relate to the whole Christian stuff. What I did, I took their, meaning the tanners, research and their insights and put it in a way that works best for me. That explains my train of thought in terms of why I no longer believe in the church. My obsession now is not to, is not the same as obsession it was a year, two, or three ago. I don't care about the LDS church anymore. Its foundational truth claims are dim, demonstrably false. The church is doing a fantastic job in accelerating its eventual irrelevance and demise. Part I'm sorry, where is this from, by the way? Your CES letter. No, the, what you just read is from the CES letter? That was from the Mormon I'm sorry, that's, that's from the Mormon. The, the part one, part two, and part three are from the Mormon so story. this is all from that interview? Uh-huh. The first part, second part, which part is that? The first part? Okay, the first section I read, and if I'm going to read it again, I will. It's fine, just... Part one, part two, and part okay. three. Okay? So we're on part three. You state, church is fake and not real. No, it, the church, is not really good. It's fake. It's not real. You state also, I'm an atheist or a Buddhist. So, in that sense, I'm kind of an ath of atheist. I don't believe in any religion or gods I currently know of. If a gun were pointed to my head and I was forced to join a religion, I would probably join Buddhism. Now, this is this is not this is my my words here. Jeremy offered, I have offered to have written, I offered to have written dialogue with you, and I outlined certain guidelines for you to respect during our discussions, including you agreeing to keep our discussions confidential for the time that we would communicate with each other. You chose not to participate in these discussions. You and any person are welcome to your own conclusions and views. But when you create your own organization and begin to solicit others to point to your point of view, seeking to oppose the foundation doctrines of the church, you cross a boundary wherein you, you support participate in direct opposition to the church. It is my opinion that you are, have repeatedly acted in clear and open, deliberate public opposition to the church and its leaders. I want to, to share my testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know the gospel of Jesus Christ is true, that we're led by a modern-day prophet, that through direct revelation we're guiding direct these latter days, that families can be eternal, and we can find joy and happiness living gospel principles that are taught to us by prophets, seers, and revelators. And I bear that testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, you have now 45 minutes to make a statement. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, okay. uh, President Ivan, can you read the rest of the apostasy definition? Uh, like you read the definition, but there's more to it. I'd like you to make a statement. Okay. You're not going to answer that question? I'm not. Okay. Um, my experience with uh, President Ivan's, unfortunately, the past year and a half, is that he has never answered my questions. Not a single question. I have asked you three questions over and over, and over, and over, and over, and over, and over, 20 times. And the specific question that I asked you is, what errors or mistakes in the CES letter or on the website is incorrect so that I can publicly correct it? The second question I asked you is, if there are no errors or mistakes, why am I being punished for seeking and sharing the truth? And the third question I asked you so what question am I being punished for? And you have not answered a single one of them. Can I ask you why you are not answering them? You're going to make a statement. So you're not going to answer I'm any not. questions no. this evening? I've stated my evidence. You make a statement. Okay. Um, so do I have your... Um, would you agree that I... Uh, you make a statement, Jeremy. Why are you not answering any questions? This is not the time for that. I'm, when is the time? We're not going to get in debate. You're going to make a statement, period. I'm just going to make a statement. I, why, why won't you answer my questions? I've asked, I, and they're very reasonable questions that I've asked over and over. Like, yeah. I don't know what, if, if there are errors and mistakes, I want to correct them. 
I don't understand why you are spiritually executing me over something I don't know what's wrong. I mean, you claim that I'm in public, op you claim I'm in opposition to the church. The church's essays are in public opposition to the church. Out of curiosity, by a show of hands, how many of you have read the church's essays? Nobody here? Okay. Um, by a show of hands, how many of you have read the CES letter? Nobody here tonight has read the CES letter? Wow. And uh, by a show of hands, has President Ivan prepared you tonight for uh, this council by reading the CES letter carefully? Jeremy, you're going to make a statement. Okay. So, uh, no questions are going to be answered tonight. Um, this is crazy. Uh, this is really crazy. So, um, I refuse your accusation that I'm in opposition to the church. It, it is interesting that the claim that you have made against me, there's not one thing that you've said that is, it's not true, or I'm claiming falsehood. You're just saying that I'm in opposition. The reality is, is that the church's essays are in opposition to the church. The book of Abraham is in opposition to the book of Abraham. Joseph Smith, the, polyg the Kirtland and Nauvoo polygamy essay, this place discusses very disturbing information about Joseph Smith, how he married 14-year-old girls and other men's wives. There are serious problems with church history. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with my background, I was approached by my grandfather's friend who was a CES director. And he asked me to lay out my concerns and questions. And I laid out, I laid out my concerns and questions. And his response after reading it was that it was a very well-written document and that the brethren are concerned about the issues that the church is facing now in the in in information age. Um, he said that he would respond back to me. He never responded back to me. I have, a, I have sought official answers to church problems. And I've sought the answers for three years. And they never came. I've sought answers from you, President Ivins. We had two meetings. First meeting was October 19th. You, we, we got to know each other. And you agreed to read the CS letter. And you read the CS letter. And I appreciate that. And the next meeting we had was November 2nd. And in that meeting, I asked you to correct me and show me where the errors in the CES letter is so that, so that uh, I can publicly correct it. In the beginning of the meeting, you refused to, to do that. So um, I kept asking you to please correct me where it's incorrect so that I can publicly correct it. I am only interested in accurate information. And so I asked you to define apostasy for me. And you pulled out the church handbook of instruction. And there's a part in the church handbook of instruction where it outlines the different definition. You've had one of the definitions. You've had repeatedly act in clear, open, and deliberate public opposition to the church or its leaders. But you didn't read the second one. And the second one is possessed in teaching a church doctrine information that is not church doctrine after they have been corrected by their bishop or higher authority, higher authority. And when you read that last sentence, your face and your demeanor shifted because you realize you have to correct me, that we can't go by your quote-unquote dark feelings. And so I asked you, correct me, please correct me, show me where the errors are. And you agreed to show me, not, you said, not in that meeting, but I'll show you later where your errors and mistakes are. So it went from the beginning of the meeting, I'm not going to correct you in any way, I'm not getting into that, to where after you've read this definition, you said, okay, I will show you the errors and mistakes. And you disappeared. I never heard back from you again. I heard uh, uh, until this year. And so for a year and a half, uh, a year I waited for your answers. And instead of answers, you, call, you had the audacity of calling me after you knew that I told your secretary that I had a family member in hospice. You still have the audacity to call me and say, uh, come in anyway. And I asked you what this meeting was in regards to, hoping that maybe it would be answers that you told me you were going to get. 
and the uh, corrections and errors that you were going to give me. But instead of doing that, I asked you in what the meeting was in, in regards to, and you stated this is regards to your membership in the church. We never had a conversation between November 2nd when you agreed to help me and to give me the errors and mistakes to that time. And I find that disturbing. And we had an agreement to meet in March 15th. And I am extremely disturbed by how I was treated this year by you, President. Extremely disturbed. We had an agreement on March 15th to meet. And in, in February, you came, out, uh, you, came, then you came out to me and said, we're going to hold a council on you on Valentine's Day. I said, wait a minute. I never changed the agreement. March 15th. Why are you changing it? It was, it was really weird, this real sense of urgency that you had all of a sudden. You disappeared for a year, then all of a sudden you had the sense of urgency. On the phone call, when I said March 15th, you said, I can't wait that long. Is Salt Lake involved in this? Okay, you're not going to answer that. So, so you tried to hold a Valentine's Day disciplinary council on me without talking to me, without giving me any errors no mistakes to, cor to correct. And um, I just find that really disturbing. So, and I also have a problem with how you conducted it. You were, you claimed that you had additional information to warrant the disciplinary council on Valentine's Day. That was just made it urgent. And the letter that you sent me a few days later said, Condit on becoming a member. So it appeared that you and the church were attempting a character assassination attempt on me. I had no idea what I was being taken to, taken to the court for. I didn't know the exact charges. No charges were given to me. I was never called to repentance. No errors or mistakes were given me. Not one single question was answered. It's wrong. It's not right. It's unchristlike in every way. So I had a press conference to discuss this unchristlike behavior and this injustice that was being done against me. And lo and behold, the next very next day, five, five o'clock in the morning, you emailed me saying that the disciplinary council will, was council for Valentine's Day. So you scheduled it for March 20th. And you said that our March 15th meeting was still on. And so February 28th, you emailed me again. And you asked if I was still going to meet on March 15th. I said, nothing changed. I'll still meet with you. By the way, I'm going to bring my ASL interpreter to ensure that I understand the meeting. And you had a problem with the interpreter. You did not want an interpreter present. So you canceled the March 15th meeting. And you also canceled the March 20th meeting. And you took our conversation into writing. And I was gracious. I was grateful for that. So I wanted to start a conversation with you. But you, you placed restrictions on it. You, for some reason, you wanted to take it into the dark, into non-transparency. And in our November 2nd meeting, when you offered to help me with answers, there were no conditions placed on that. But all of a sudden, there's all these conditions that we have to talk in the dark and all that. And I was trying to understand why you were placing these conditions. What was your reasoning for it? Because I believe in the Mormon marketplace of information. I believe that individuals and investigators and members, members of the church need all of the information on the table to make a fully informed decision as to whether or not they want to commit their hearts, minds, lives, and money to Mormonism. It's important because if not all the information is on the table, if an organization or an individual takes some information off the table, critical information, they are literally obstructing the free agency of their member and investigator by hiding and withholding important information from members and investigators. You are literally obstructing the free agency of members of a church. And I have a problem with that. I believe in the Mormon marketplace of information. The reality is, is that church history is absolutely messy and it's not pretty down there. And there, there are just problems. We, we're in the reality of the information age. We're in the church essays world. And um, 
I don't understand what I've done wrong. All I'm doing is ask, I, I went to official channels to seek answers to my doubts. And this was after a year of frustration with dealing with unofficial Mormon apologists. You know, Mormon and all these guys who are no, no more legitimate or official than the crazy high priest guy that everybody rolls their eyes to in Sunday school. I was tired of them. I wanted official answers from a church. So I went, to, I went through official channels to get them, the CES director. I went through, went through, uh, through you to get answered. And the, the, and the only thing I get in return is threats of us communication. No answers, not a single question answered the last three years. Um, let me look at my notes real quick. I was hoping for a dialogue tonight. I was hoping to be able to ask my questions and get answers. But it's obvious that I'm not going to get anything tonight. That this is not a real trial. It's not a real... Like, as far as I'm concerned, this is a kangaroo court. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, you guys are not interested in helping me. I mean, it's very disturbing. How many minutes do I have left? 30. 30 minutes? I mean, brethren, I don't, I don't know how to repent of the truth. I don't know how to repent of church-verified essay facts. I mean, I don't know how to repent of... I've asked you over and over and over to tell me where I'm wrong. And... The real thing, the real question, the real problem here is not whether or not I'm spreading false words or lies. I've never been accused of that. It's that I'm public about this information. So the real, the real problem here is that the church has a problem with freedom of expression. The church claims to believe in free agency, but it doesn't. It, you can keep your thoughts in your head, but the minute that you exercise your freedom of expression, you get thrown into dis disciplinary counsel. So the church is not doesn't believe in free agency. Um, I want to read a couple quotes. If a faith will not bear to be investigated, if its preachers and professors are afraid to have it, have it examined, their foundation must be very weak. George Albert Smith. Truth has no fear of the light. If an individual or organization seeks to silence doubt or questioning in the private room or in the town square, it is filled with fear, and its house is built on sand. And if we have the truth, no harm can come from investigation. If we have not the truth, it ought to be harmed. President J. Reuben Clark. Hubie Brown. Now I have mentioned freedom of expression, mentioned freedom to express your thoughts. But I caution you that your thoughts and expressions must meet competition in the marketplace of thought. And in that comp competition, truth will emerge triumphant. Only error needs to fear freedom of expression. Um. So I'm going to respond real quick to your accusations. One, you, pub you published materials or participated in interviews which have attempted to discredit the church. I'm not discrediting the church. The church's essays are discrediting the church. There's an essay called Race and the Priesthood where the brethren who approved these essays. Today, the church disavows the theories advanced in the past that black skin is a sign of divine dis disfavor or curse. So today's prophet seers and revelators through yesterday's prophet seers and revelators under the Bible. We have a record of 130 years of prophets pointing to God for the priesthood ban. And it was not just a priesthood ban, it was a temple exaltation ban. 
because black families and black individuals could not get endowed or sealed in the temple for 130 years over what the church now calls a disavowed theory. A disavowed theory that began with Brigham Young in 1852. It wasn't because the blacks were not bailing, bailing in the pre-existence. It wasn't revelation. It was a disavowed theory. And they, in the essay says that we disavow that the black, black skin is a sign of this divine disfavor or, or curse. Yet that contradicts the Book of Mormon. In 2 Nephi 5 verse 21. And he had caused the cursing to come upon them, yea, even a sore cursing, because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him, that they had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto my people, the Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. This is the church's own essay, Race and the Priesthood. It's discrediting the the church is discrediting the Book of, Book of Mormon. It's discrediting every prophet from Brigham Young all the way to Hill B. Lee. So it's not me that's discrediting the church. It's the church's own essay, its own facts. Mormon history is discrediting the church. Joseph Smith's actions and conduct of marrying other men's wives and 14-year-old girls behind Emma's back it's discrediting Joseph Smith. It's not me that's discrediting him. It's facts. These are not anti-Mormon lies. It's amazing to me. What was yesterday's anti-Mormon lies and now today's church essays? What am I doing here, President? What am I doing here? What error or mistake have I made? Please correct me. Book of Mormon, what are 1769 King James Version errors doing in the Book of Mormon? What are 1769 King James Version errors doing in the Book of Mormon? Other scriptures that are fraudulent, 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 the Book of Abraham. This is from the Book of Abraham, as Church Essay. Neither the rules nor the translations in the grammar book correspond to those recognized by Egyptologists today. Scholars have identified the papyrus fragments as parts of standard funerary texts that were deposited with mummified bodies. This is in the church's translation in his historicity of the Book of Abraham essay. So <laughs> the papyri that Joseph Smith translated from, quote-unquote translated from, is its standard funerary document. And they expand on it. What is a standard, standard funerary document? These fragments date to between the 3rd century B.C. and the 1st century C.E., long after Abraham lived, 2,000 years after Abraham lived. It is so bad that evidence is so damning that the church is trying to sell what is called a catalyst theory. That Joseph Smith did not translate the book of, Mark, the book of Abraham like we were taught growing up in all the different churches, institutions, CES, Mutual, Sunday School, that he translated it. It's no longer he translated. He just maybe touched the papyrus and he got a revelation where it became the book of Abraham. But that, but that theory, which is bizarre and contradictory to the evidence in the journal and the claims of Joseph Smith, it doesn't explain then why, why Joseph Smith's translations of the facsimiles are wrong, that they're incorrect. Both LDS and non-LDS Egyptologists agree that the translations of the facsimiles are wrong. Joseph Smith got them wrong. So it's not me that's discrediting the church of Joseph Smith. It's the church's essays, essay facts, and Joseph Smith that is discrediting the church in, in Joseph Smith. 
Number three, express opposition to church leaders, including the prophet Joseph Smith. Again, the church's essays do that just fine. It creates a new narrative that discredits the story that we were told, dis discredits the claims of Joseph Smith. I just mentioned several of them. The Book of Abraham, Blacks in the Priesthood. There's First Vision Accounts essay. Joseph Smith wrote several different essays. They contradict each other. They evolve. It's, it's the Book of Mormon translation. We were taught that Joseph Smith used gold plates to translate the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon we have today, and the, and the essay verifies it, was not translated with gold plates. It was used with a rock and a hat. The same rock and a hat that Joseph Smith used to do treasure hunting. But yet we're still displaying artwork with Joseph Smith's fingers over the gold plates. Like, that's not... That's not, that's not honest. So I was trying to resolve these doubts and concerns. I was seeing this information. I was trying to resolve it by writing the letter to the CES director. It was not my intention to destroy the church or to take people out of the church. It still is not my intention. If people are happy in the church, awesome, fantastic. My intention is to get the official answers that I was promised by the CES director three years ago. And I still haven't received that. Um, so, again, it's not me that's discrediting, discrediting or opp doing opposition against the church. It's the church's own verified essay facts. I've done nothing wrong. I've... I stand today with my head held high, I'm morally clean, and I have a clear conscience that I have done nothing wrong. So, because you guys are not answering my questions, and you guys have not answered my questions the last three years, it is very clear to me that the church does not have answers to a truth crisis. The church does not like individuals asking questions about its truth claims. So, this is a kangaroo court. I'm done with this court. President, I am excommunicating the LDS Church. I am excommunicating you. And I am excommunicating this kangaroo court for my life. Here is my resignation letter. Goodbye.